Hello and welcome to the Friday, October 13th, 2023 edition of the Sandsnet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I already mentioned that on Saturday I'll be speaking here at B-Sides in Jacksonville. And of course the talk will be about attacks against developers. So thanks uh, Phylum for coming up with a new blog post today with yet another attack that I probably can include in my talk now. The attack in this case targets .NET developers by adding malicious packets to the NuGet gallery. NuGet is the packet manager for uh, .NET and the packages here appear to impersonate some uh, crypto coin related uh, packages like for example Solana Wallet or Kraken Exchange. Sadly uh, these packages all from the same uh, developer called Disty had about 2 million uh, downloads. Now in case someone fell for these packages you will end up with the Zero uh, Sen uh, Rat. Uh, this particular remote access uh, tool is actually sold uh, more or less sort of somewhat commercially for $60 or you can also get a subscription for $15. A month. Why would anybody install uh, these packages? Well, uh, they try to impersonate some legitimate packages. So essentially, it's just uh, typo squatting they're doing here. The actual malware is then a uh, being installed by an install script that will download the malicious uh, remote access tool via a number of sort of obfuscated PowerShell scripts. Now it took a while, but uh, earlier on Thursday, Microsoft did remove the malicious packages from NuGet also, the malware installed by these packages has a pretty good antivirus coverage according to VirusTotal. And sometimes it's almost sad to see how old, old malware is still around and uh, still uh, learning new tricks. Latest example here comes courtesy of ASEC, uh, who observed a new variant of Shellbot. Shellbot, well, it goes way back. And just to tell you how far back it goes, it still uses IRC for command and control. It looks for SH servers with known weak passwords. So really sort of you know, one of the bottom feeders kind of when it comes to malware. But apparently they found it necessary to do a little bit more obfuscation on URLs. IP addresses can be noted in a number of different formats. Usually you have that dotted decimal format where you have each byte in decimal separated by a dot. But well, that's by far not the only format that's valid. I think I talk about octal uh, before, but uh, also the sort of just uh, plain integer format is often used. And in this latest version of Shellbot, they're using actually the hexadecimal format. Honestly, haven't really seen it that much. So maybe it still works for obfuscation. But if you do see a host name that starts with CRX, well, uh, you should pay attention because that's likely just an IP as in hexadecimal. And I don't really see a good reason to ever do that sort of without trying to evade some filter. Let's talk about a couple of patches that you should be aware of before you leave for the weekend. Juniper released patches for about 30 vulnerabilities. Many of them are, well, just a denial of service vulnerabilities. There are a couple that allow the bypass of firewall rules. They could potentially be interesting, but the most interesting one here is CVE 2023-44194. This one actually does allow admin access uh, to a user without authentication due to some kind of a permission problem in a directory. I suspect this is sort of one of those, yes, you can upload a file without authentication vulnerabilities, and then that leads to possibly some code execution. Not really sufficient details here from Juniper to really see what's happening. And are you using Squid as a proxy in particular with digest authentication? Well, 
you may have a problem. And this is actually a Warner Billy announcement that I haven't really seen being talked much about. Joshua Rogers, back in 2021, performed a security audit of the, at the time, current version of Squid. And uh, within 35 days, he found 55 Warner Billies. They were all reported to the Squid project, but apparently due to understaffing at the squid project which is of course very common for these type of open source projects only a small number of these vulnerabilities were fixed many and one is this digest vulnerability have not even been assigned a cve number at this point so now Joshua went public with details regarding the vulnerabilities that he found. Again, many of them not being patched, some of them possibly leading to a remote code execution. Definitely, if you're running Squid, and uh, yes, it is a very popular project, double check if you're using any of the features here that are vulnerable. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.